Recently, we stopped by Council, a startup that offers genetic screenings to couples preparing to have a kid. To kick off our visit, I had to chat with their CEO about their process and the kinds of people who feel the need to dig into their genes when starting a family. The genetics work we're doing isn't anything new. In fact, this content has existed in nature for like decades. What we're doing is making a platform that's uh, making ridiculously fast and affordable to get screened for things that already ought to have been screened for in medical practice beforehand, like breast cancer screening. The genes to, to test for breast cancer, those had already existed for two decades. We've developed screening, uh, a platform that's able to test that at, at a very rapid scale. Can you give me a better idea of what your typical customer, I guess the person who gets a screening looks like? Is it, is it a young couple looking to have kids or is it someone who's worried because of family history that they might be likely to get a disease? Um, it's a second group. There's a young couple who doesn't have any family history. So couples who don't have any family history, those are the people who um, can get screened for all our products like family prep and for pregnancy screen. Council has performed more than 420,000 genetic screenings for couples, a figure that simply couldn't be reached if people had to perform the reactions involved by hand. After my chat with Ramji, I headed over to their R&D lab to get a better idea of how they're scaling these processes up. We primarily take off-the-shelf parts where we can, but we almost always have to modify them in some way. Um, and so it's the you know, mechanical engineering to modify like parts, it's the electrical engineering to connect everything together. Um, it's a lot of software, to be honest, in order to actually make all these things talk to one another. Um, so as we look at the things behind us, you know, it's, it's kind of a mix of electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, computer science, um, and some molecular biology, to be honest, in order to make everything work together perfectly. So if I'm new to this space, that robot might just kind of look like something out of Iron Man. So what sure. are we doing here? Yeah, actually, uh, robots like this, exactly like this, were in Iron Man. Um, so we're buying the same robots that you know Iron Man would use to build you know, his other robots, and we're figuring out how to use them to do molecular biology. In this case, it's clinical diagnostics. More specifically, we're doing genetic testing, right? So we always say, I always say, genetic testing is the moving of clear fluid, little droplets of clear fluid from one place to another. Um, that's primarily what we're doing back there, but it's really, really specific, and it's done by really expensive robots. Um, so this one is moving plates around. It's moving about 100 samples at a time, so every time you see it move around, the 100 samples are going from one place to another, and they're on their way to go from one experiment to another. Okay, so we've talked a lot about robots and sending stuff to servers in the cloud. Yeah. Where are people involved in all this? We have lots of different screens that we've created that actually take really complex information and distill it down to some really great visuals. And so a lot of what people are doing are actually just doing quality control to make sure that everything looks perfect um, as they watch different points in the pipeline. There's about 15 people that are just doing automation work and probably another half dozen that are working on the software on the back end. Um, it's, it's actually, we have more engineers than we have clinical laboratory scientists. So it's, it's, we're kind of the reverse of a traditional clinical lab in that we really choose to solve problems with engineering as opposed to just hiring people and having them do work.